Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself, notice not somebody else is going to humble. We have to humble ourselves. I can't call Robert up here and say, Robert, I want you to work in my life and humble me over the next week, couple of weeks. No, it's something that I must do myself. I must work on this area of humility myself. I can't call on somebody else to do it. I must do it. There has to be a change on the inside of us. Jesus said, unless you humble yourself as a little child, Become as a little child. One of the things I've noticed about little children is that when you instruct them, they'll basically believe whatever you tell them. Whatever you say to them, they'll basically believe it. You know, that's one of the attributes of humility. Believe the word of God. Believe what God is telling you. Believe the instructions of God. Walk under the instructions of God. Know that God has the very best in mind for you. And as you take the word of God and live by it, you are walking in humility. You are trusting that God knows better than you. You are trusting that God has the answer. Humility, it means to make low, to bring low, to have a modest opinion of oneself. I like this. To behave in an unsuming manner devoid of haughtiness. To behave in an unsuming manner devoid of haughtiness. So there's actually a behavior involved in walking in humility. There's actually a way of acting that will demonstrate humility. Humility means to behave in an unsuming manner. In other words, we can train ourselves to walk in humility. We can actually behave in ways that demonstrate humility. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're humble, but as you move in that direction, you begin to act and you catch yourself when you act in pride, you move toward humility, you actually begin a change that takes place on the inside that you can't actually do it yourself, but as you step out in faith and begin to act in humility, the power of God can come in and release a spirit of humility in, in us so that we will actually be people who are walking in humility before God. But we have to start out in faith. Faith is an, is, is an action word. Faith is action. Whenever we move towards something, we begin acting in a certain path and a direction that we want to go in. Faith comes within us, and the power of God brings us to where we want to go. I don't know if, I, if I'm getting this across to you this morning, but I'm talking about a very key issue that will open the blessing of God into our lives, that if we'll walk into it, we'll be amazed at how things will change, how circumstances can change in our life. You see, I believe that God has a difficult time moving in a proud heart. I don't need you. I can do it on my own. I don't need the power of God working in my life. Humility does not mean thinking less of yourself than of other people, nor does it mean having a low opinion of your own gifts. It doesn't mean that you're less than anybody else. It doesn't mean that the gifts that you have are not important, the talents that you have are not important. But I love this statement. It means freedom. Humility means freedom from thinking about yourself one way or the other. It means humility, walking in humility means I don't have to think about my great talents, my wonderful gifts. I don't have to think about seeing myself better than somebody else. Humility means like you're quite happy with, the, with who you are in God. Humility means that you don't have to compare your gifts with somebody else. You don't have to compare your value, your worth with somebody else because the greater one has made you worthy. Again, Jesus said, or the scripture says that he, Jesus, who had no sin, became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Second Corinthians 5.21 tells us that. That we, that you and I, might become the righteousness of God in him. In other words, we can have right standing with our Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. So we don't have to compare ourselves with anybody else. Because God has already made us righteous. Hallelujah. Praise God. He has already made us righteous, and we will never be any more righteous than what Jesus has made us. We can't add anything to our righteousness because our righteousness comes from Jesus.
I mean, if we feel unworthy and we read the Word of God, we make a choice whether to believe the Word of God or not. And the Word of God says that God has made me righteous in Christ Jesus. We choose whether we believe it or not. And if we believe it and meditate on it and see ourselves as, as being righteous before God, eventually our feelings will catch up with the Word of God. And we will feel righteous. We will know that we can come boldly before the throne of grace to find help in time of need. We don't have to shrink back when a problem comes and we feel full of shame and we do something that is very shameful. Maybe we've committed a sin. We felt we fell and we did something that, you know, no Christian should ever do. We don't have to feel shame coming before the throne of God. We can run before the throne of God and say, God, please forgive me. And with your help, God, I want to repent. And I'm telling you, with your help, I'll never do it again. I'm, I'm counting on you, Lord, to help me. But we don't have to come with our heads down in shame because God has provided a way for us to receive his righteousness in the Lord Jesus Christ that we truly can come before him and know that he's there with open arms he wants to receive us and no matter what's happening in your life this morning I want you to know that you have a right to the throne of God you have a right to come before him. You have a right to come and yes, confess your sin, but count, you know that he is the one who will embrace you. And he'll say, come on, let's try this again. Come on, I'm with you. I know things can be better. I know you're going to get a handle on this. I know that the power of God is going to help you overcome this.